Right. <clears throat> Welcome back to part three. Um, hopefully, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to wrap this up today. I definitely don't want to drag this out for any longer. Um, but as I know, I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to keep the videos like to don't want them going over like 40 minutes because I know you guys probably won't want to be sitting there um that entire time listening to me talk. All right. So. Uh, when encountering a patient for the first time, introduce yourself and state that you are part of the hospital unit and laboratory staff. Inform patient that a blood specimen is being collected for a test ordered by the physician. Okay, introducing yourself and stating you are part of the hospital unit and laboratory staff. Again, that is why we have rules in place at school for you all to make sure that you're in uniform. Um, and make sure that you have your name badge on. It makes you it um, allows for us to identify you as being a student at Unitech. Same thing um, with your place of employment. That's why you have uniforms and 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 name tags. Right. The uniform may be able to be duplicated because anyone can go out and buy scrubs and say, Hey, I I I work here. Um, and but identifying yourself is going to um, alleviate a, a lot of a lot of that okay um, um, so you just want to make sure that you that you introduce yourself and let them know that you are who you are and that you're a part of the staff and letting them know that you're what your what your purpose is for coming in to see them today you know just walk in hey you got this blood work Nah, that, that that sounds real real sketchy and I wouldn't want to deal with you. Okay. When encountering a patient uh, for the first time, be calm, uh, be compassionate, highly professional, um, uh, cautioning the patient that the procedure may hurt a little may hurt a little, but will be over soon. Avoid distractions by excessive talking. Thank patients for his or her uh, cooperation. Again, just to further elaborate on what I said on day one of one of the lectures, like if you're dealing with dealing with a child, hey, is this gonna hurt? Oh, it may it may hurt a little bit, or you may feel a little pressure, but it'll be over soon, and I'll give you a, a lollipop and a sticker uh, when it, when it's all done. Again, building that rapport, getting them getting the patient um, to relax, and it's just gonna make your job a lot easier. Um, you don't want to go in there and do a lot of talking, like I said, if it, with the person that that was blind. You want to talk to them about their senses. You know, go in there, keep it short and sweet. Get in, get out. Okay, keep it simple. And thank them for their time and cooperation. Because again, it just shows them. Um, it helps to makes them feel valued, makes them feel appreciated. So make sure that you you thank them. All right. Uh, Correct patient identification is essential. Special identification procedures will be documented for ambulatory patients. Okay. I cannot express how important this is. Again, uh, make sure that you, you 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 walk through all your steps for the identification process. Again, you don't want to just grab a chart off a of, off a the desk go out of the door and just go in and just start talking to people. You see this in movies and TV shows all the time. You read articles about this stuff online about patients that have been um, misident misidentified. Think about how would you feel like if you if you were in there for just a routine checkup and then they come in the tomorrow and they have to do um, immediate surgery and you don't know why and you. Uh, that would be a, a lot of mass hysteria again that could cost you your job and rest assured you there would be a lawsuit waiting for you right around the corner so again make sure that you properly identify your patient make sure um because hey um people have twins okay um i have definitely been in a situation where luckily i knew that the um i knew the the patients had 
I, I, I knew, I knew, well, I think, I think I, I knew their, their weight, their weight, their weight was off. One of the twins was bigger than the other. And so when they, um, when their samples had came to, came to the lab to be processed, I noticed that the information on the bottles didn't line up what was documented in the computer. And so luckily I was able to, uh, we were able to get the situation corrected before it got it got too late. And I was just thinking that um, in that situation, all I could think about was what if, what if it had not been me that got their, that got their, their samples. Like that could have been that could have been bad. And they were in they were both in good health. They didn't have anything wrong with them. But in the event that something was wrong, I mean that it just could have been bad. Right. Um the Georgia Commission recommends using at least two ways to identify a patient. Um neither to be the patient's room number. Okay. You don't want to just say, Oh, well, Mr. Jones is in room three. Uh, Mr. Jones was in probably room three earlier or last night when you was at work. And Mr. Jones is not in room three today. OK, and be mindful. Check your charts um, and taking blood samples or administering medication to um, a patient. OK, so again, we'll make sure, I always want to make sure that you use two methods to identify the patients when we're going in to interact with them. OK. Don't just base it off prior knowledge. Follow the steps every single time. Okay. You're going to confirm the patient's identification by a three-way match. Check the test requisition, which is where you'll be documented, which should have all your patient's information on it and a the test that should be that you should be performing. Check the hospital identification armband. You know, that's the band that you get when you go when you get checked into the hospital and ask for a patient's verbal identification. Hey, excuse me, how you doing today, ma'am? I'm so and so. Can I get your name and last four? Or name and date of birth? It's that simple. And follow the steps every time. If a patient does not have an armband, a positive confirmation must be made by a unit nurse who knows the patient. Process um well documented by a healthcare worker. Right. Man, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. You want to make sure that you document everything to the best of your ability. So just to save a bunch of grief and hard work on the back end. Okay. Identification procedures must be well documented, especially for homebound patients, mobile vans, and other off-site locations. Okay. But again, so if you're sending a patient somewhere or um, on their own, or if they have to be transported somewhere, again, you definitely want to make sure that we have um, everything documented on them, so as to make that transition at their next location um, seamless as possible. Identifying identi identity may, excuse me, may include demographic data such as the patient's ID number, date of birth, address, phone number. Okay. Um, Confirm information by patient prior to blood collection. Like I said, um, hey, how you doing today, sir and ma'am? Can I get your name and uh, name and last four, or I guess you to verify your address for me. Uh, again, these are things. These are things that you see again in, in in your everyday life when when you go to subscribe to something. They ask you to verify your your email account to make sure that it's a it's an active account. All right, every so often. They, um, Netflix will ask you to verify that your, your payment information is correct. And so, I mean, if, if these things are doing it, if you have to verify your email address to, to buy some shoes online, and if Netflix wants to make sure you have the right card on file for them to charge you so you keep watching, you bet that making sure that this patient's information is correct because we want to make sure that we get them the best treatment. All right. Uh, computerization in the clinical laboratory. Um, manual systems require human inter, um, intervention. Okay. Uh, Semi-automated little human intervention is required. And this is a, um, so like if you have, I, don't, I can only speak from my experience. So I know um, with a, with iPhone, if you have all your information in your iPhone, when you go to check out to do certain things on your, 
uh, when you go to check out and do certain things on your phone, like if you're shopping or if you're trying to regain access to, to something. Well, I, I know they have that with, with Google. You have all your information and stuff. Uh, but, you know, that when you go to fill out, when you go to fill out your, your information forms, like a lot of your information can already be programmed in. If it's already programmed in your phone, it's just a click. It's just a click of the button, and that speeds up the, the, the process. Okay, with that um, and natural manual, the manual system is where you have to put everything in manually. I um, mean, even and, and even with on on your cell phones, sometimes it'll kick your information back. Like, um, and I know on certain systems, like uh, it'll it'll turn it'll turn a certain color if you use that if you use that the automated thing. And the only thing you have to do, like say, is like just take off like the last the letters. Like if it's Say ask you to confirm confirm your email account if you copy and paste it if it's not already in there. Um, the 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 actual one may be white, but when you type when you paste that that bottom one, it may turn say like yellow or it may turn pink or whatever. So if you go to the end of it, just erase the M and type the M back on. It's going to process it as being correct. So that's a little hack there if you didn't know that. Um, automate a little or no human um, intervention is required. Um, know which system to use in your healthcare facility. Yeah, um, you'll see a lot of places they operate. They you have the like um, like scanning system now. Um, like like the like a barcode system or a QR code um, reader. So that'll make it that makes it a lot easier. It all makes sure all the information is um, is in the computer already. The only thing you have to do is just verify what's verify what's on the screen matches with what's on paper, and you know that'll be that'll help you out with that. So we will give us some examples coming up on this slide. All right, so see we have a. Components of the computer system, computers, imaging, and a laboratory. Um, components of computer in the first picture. Um, computer imaging in a laboratory. And this healthcare team is using a laptop for clerical data. Um, data entry that can include ordering lab tests. Okay? Think about it. You may see, you may have seen, like, as of recently, like, if you went to the hospital, someone may have a have a iPad or a tablet where they're recording all your results on and that sends a cut down on the 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 mis uh, the mishandling of information between between point A and point B because if I'm the lead person here and I'm the doctor tells me to draw this test if I draw the blood for this person, as I'm transporting it to the lab, with me being a lead person, the physician may need something else, or someone else may need something. I have to stop and show them, and I can sit something down, and then it could be out too long, past the uh, the uh, a lot of time. Um, information, information. My papers could get mixed in with something that that someone else has. Um, so, incorporating the technology in this may just cuts down on the middleman between all that to ensure that we get the, the best data, uh, the correct data to the people in the lab. Okay, um, laboratory requisition labels. Simply has your patient ID, which is name, unique number, location, gender, DOB, position, position ordering the test, and test required. Okay. Um, you guys uh, get some get some practice with that. So you make sure that you know how to fill those out properly. Because okay. again, that any misinformation placed on these requisition forms can cause um, a huge setback. Could cause a lot of um, a lot of problems with the with the patients. Definitely want to have them getting the wrong test. Um, like if you look at um, Figure two thirteen. No, well, it might be on the problem. Let's see. Um, 
other components of the the rec label um time and date of specimen collection because that is that is highly important a lot of these samples are time sensitive so we need to make sure that we correct them in the the a lot amount of time um say if it's a regular a regular blood a regular blood draw say we're using a red top they need it needs to sit for it needs to sit and clot on its own for and a lot amount of time so um having the time in which the sample is collected from the time that that sample is collected and that, and that time goes on there like the clock is starting so again and making sure that it gets from um from your hands to the lab and that a lot amount of time is is, is very important because the longer it's out then when the components start break down then the, the test results will be um will start becoming misconstrued okay source of specimen when appropriate um pertinent clinical information with when appropriate just a special comments um clamping site um race ethnicity um billing information if applicable all these things will be on your work sheet today again um you see in figure 213 that's what you that's what you see there you see a picture of the of the rig form and what the the labels will look like this, this is the requisition form in a and b would be the the labels okay uh barcodes light and dark bands that relate to pacific alpha, alphanumeric symbols um a qr code uh, just quick response two-dimensional um barcode you see, and you see a lot of places using those now, um, just to make it, just to pull people in. Again, get their information, build their rapport with you. Um, you can put them on. I see them like on soda cans. You can like scan the QR code, and you could be in it to to win a prize. Some places you can scan the, uh, the QR code and it'll take you on a virtual tour somewhere. And so QR codes are definitely uh, the the wave um, and the, the, the thing of the future. They will definitely eventually fully replace barcodes. Okay. Um, radio frequency. Um, ID tags are the silicone chips that transmit data to a wireless receiver. Um, it's a microchip. Uh, say if you have um, a dog, if you if you know, say if it's a, a purebred dog, you have you do have the option of of getting your dog microchip. So if it gets lost, you, know, you can go to like the vet or something, and they can track the dog for you and let you know where your dog is. Okay. Um, stat request via telephone in case of emergency, documented electronically on a standardized form in a laboratory prior to specimen collection. Okay. You see that the barcode, you see the QR code um, in the armband. No, that's just showing. That's not. Both of these are, are barcodes, and you see the the patient's armband here. And you see they're scanning. And both those. Okay, so these um, A is a picture of a QR code and B is a QR code for a blood for a blood specimen. You see, it has it has that that barcode, your traditional barcode here, and then here you have your your QR code. And you see these things like on um these actually you can actually have these things placed on your business cards also um to link your um, LinkedIn profile to your your business card. And like again, just QR because QR codes are the are the ways of the future. Um, you could say you find yourself in a situation where you're talking to you're out networking with someone, not even so much as networking. You could just be standing in line at McDonald's or waiting to check out at, at Walmart, and you guys are uh, um, you and the person behind you in front of you have a common interest about something. And, and, you know, you're experiencing extended wait time, and you guys engage in conversation and tell you that hey, they want to offer you a job or get in contact with them. You don't have, you know, you didn't bring a resume, copy of the resume with you to Walmart. But if you had business cards, you can pass them on your business cards, and they can scan your, they can scan your business cards and go directly to your LinkedIn profile and see um, all your qualifications. 
All right? It's a little trick there. Uh, and you can get like 500 business cards for like 10 bucks if you go to, to, to Vistaprint. And that's a lot cheaper and a lot more convenient than trying to get um, having your resume printed out. Because you know, resume, that, that you carry them in your portfolio, business cards, and keep in your pocket. Um, resume paper is like 25 bucks for like 100 sheets. Business cards, you can get like 500 for 10 bucks. It's right. another little trick there. Feel free to use that. All right. Labels containing information, containing following information, um, patient identification for test re to required, uh, specific test required, types of specimen collection tools required. Okay. Uh, again, be mindful of this because depending on where you work, you won't have to. You won't have to put a lot of thought into knowing the the order of draw or what tubes are um, what tubes need to be done for each for each test because all that could be documented for you on the on your rec form. But again, if it's not something that your place your establishment is on to, maybe they don't know, um, they haven't been introduced to the software. Um, you can introduce it. You can introduce it to them, but until they get around. And start riding the bandwagon of getting of having these devices in their office at their disposal to make the procedure a lot more easier uh, for them. That's why knowing the order of draw is important. And in short, because you won't always have these things at your disposal. Okay. Um, unique identif identification access. Um, it says numbers or sample numbers to be used for the particular collection time, smaller transfer labels for uh, aliquot tubes, collection tubes, um, COVID micro micro uh, microscope slides, um, blood draws list by by floor and units, all this stuff you will see on your on your record label. Um, data to be considered identification of patient, patient location. And physician date and time of specimen collection, description source of specimen, and label precautions, uh, compacts and ease of, of prepackaged, preparing package for shipments. These are all things that that you, that you would need to know. Okay, um, your, your components like how if I have to send if I have to send blood to another state. Um, I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section in your um, components. If you have to send a package to to another lab, um, how should how should it be packed? All right, that is and that's detrimental to the integrity of this sample. So you want to make sure that you that you you pack it correctly. You want to give a, gen, a a great description of what's in there um, because. Packages could get messed up. One company may be shipping to one place and they require something from one company they don't require from, from the other. Okay. Um, so you just want to make sure that you you give them a good description of what, what's going on, what what should be in the box. And again, that's even even when you order something, they always have an itemized copy of what it is that, that you order. If you ever go send a package somewhere, they want to know exactly what's in there. Okay. Um well, for the most part, depending on what it is that you're sending. Um, date and time, again, because specimens can only be allowed out for a certain period of time. So you want to make sure that we, we document the date and time and make sure all the patient information is correct on there. Also. Okay. And I just want you guys to be, I know I've said a lot, but I want you to take um, take into account like how many times you say verifying the patient information, um, the date and time, how all that stuff is being repeated, okay? Because I mean, it's it's vital, it's extremely vital, okay? Uh, so, sequential um, order of multiple results on a single on a single shipment, um, format consistency for administration and record keeping, clear understandability of instructions for the orders, okay? So again, you just want to make sure that then the instructions are clear and and concise. So make sure people can pick it up and and go with it. Um, 
make sure it's in a proper format so they can make that would make allow for it to be easily read um and then go in their their records because again companies operate using different softwares different forms and things of that nature so we want to make sure we it's the it's, it's consistent so anybody can pick it up and read it and know what's going on um and it'll go into their, their records um sequential order of multiple results on a single specimen um if we running and we have one tube of blood how many and we need to run multiple tests like what tests do we need to do we do we need to run okay make sure all this stuff needs to be documented Right. Logical location and patient's chart and patient's chart for reference laboratory reports, listing of reference ranges or normal and abnormal clinical values, assurance of accuracy of requests of transcription. Okay, so how did you how do you want these things to be um, transcribed? Like how do you want these results to be um, labeled on this on this form? What are the normal ranges? Like so when we going back, to, uh, um, what we just talked about in EKG. When we talking about the the stress test. Prior to the stress test, we need the we need their heart rate at a normal resting level, and we compare that to the required to the required rate um, that we needed for them to do um, that we needed that we that we need them to get to in order to see what's going on with their. Uh, See what's going on with their heart, so we know what area we need to look at, so we can make the, the proper determination for um, the the correct treatment. Okay. Um, make sure we have the, the the patient's history. We talked about that in one in one of the in one of the, the chapters in EKG. How how why that's important? Because if you come from a you come from a, a family that has ha that has a history of chronic heart disease, hey, that needs to be noted. What have your levels been like? throughout the years leading up to this point okay um and you need to have a um a, a proper location on the on the form to identify um what lab should be what lab should be running the test on the specimens again because lab ships to different places um make sure that your is your lab that this that this should be mixed at um this should be um the test should be done on because again it could be a problem on the on the send on the sending end where the requisitions got messed up and so wow it's it probably should have been caught before it made it to you all especially if it's been shipped somewhere um but again we can still stop that and ensure the patient gets the proper results if we do our part and check and check it prior to running the test and you don't want to just dive in and just um just start running tests on blood it's like you wouldn't want to walk in and just start drawing blood on a patient okay check the charts first verbal reports documentation should include patient's name and hospital number name of person receiving the report date and time information given and name name of person using the report okay all this should be uh, we need to make sure we disclose all this information okay um electronic reports electrical device provided a rapid report service system more reliable than uh they are more reliable than verbal reports um, results can be immediately available on each patient on each patient unit and access for authorization for authorized personnel in each um, patient patient's unit okay, again it was already there they say with the electrical with the electrical reports it cuts down the middleman um uh, make sure that the documentation is is properly information can't get mixed up because it's already because we're logging it in at the patient's side right then and there on the spot and all thing we gotta do is just hit send and it's already in the lab waiting on them okay all right so we got here at two this is a sample this is a sample uh rec form um again couldn't really see it in, in the and with a thing that was 212 couldn't really see it 
but here it just gives you a better view of what it looks like. Okay, um, IDC codes, um, international uh, statistical classification of disease and related health problems, codes based on body system and medical condition of symptoms, um, and that's why that's what medical billing and coding is for, and making sure that all the codes are are right. So there is there is literally a code for everything. So when you hear them at the at the uh, clap line um, and the award ceremony, you hear you hear them say there's a code for it. There is literally a code for everything. So we want to make sure that everything is coded properly. So if I tell you that I need a TB skin test, I need a urinalysis, um, and I need a um, I need a glucose test done, I and mean, there's literally a code for all of that. So we want to make sure that we get the we get them done correctly. All right. Um, CPT codes, current procedural terminology, alphanumeric codes used to describe specific tests, surgeries, evaluation, and other medical procedures. And it just goes into further elaborates on what I just said for the last slide. Um, clinical or medical records, um, documentation procedures, actions, and observations for each patient, uh, legal records for patient visits, progress, and everything done to the patient. Again, we need to make sure we keep a record of all that. Admissible, um, everything needs to be admissible in a court of law. Because again, like I said, in the event that the patient refuses to get off the phone or whatever, or they're not paying you any, um, any attention, and something happens you want to make sure that you're covered in the court of law so you want to make sure that everything is documented according to company policy so that way it will hold up in the court of law um on your behalf all right um emr or hmr or cpr um not to be confused with with cpr we're performing on people okay uh, the periodized patient records what we're talking about here um, eliminates and reduce paper, um, consolidates data to be accessed from multiple sites, um, timely important of information from many um, ancillary sites. Ancillary, ancillary sites. Sorry. Okay, some medical records. Want to make sure that we're monitoring quality of care, coordination of care accrediting and licensing, um, legal protection, and research and teaching um, teaching institution. And all this stuff is important. And it plays a documentation and piece communication. All these things, all those things play important in every facet of everything listed here. And you want to make sure that you, that you are, or that you're, you're protecting yourself for the courtroom. Um, everything that you've done Anything that you've done with the patient, any interaction that you have, you know this person has has a tick, or you see that they have a rash, we document that because um, that could be a new on site of for a different a different condition um, that hasn't been discovered, or a um, condition that hasn't been seen in a while. Making sure that everything is documented again provides the correct course of treatment for them and it shows and it can be possibly used in um, a teaching um, situation if you found something if something new is found all right okay um, important tips for documenting clerical information we again want to make sure that you be accurate be objective be short straight to the point Make sure it's legible. Make sure everyone agrees. Um, errors should not be erased. Only corrected, right? Because you know if you have um, you write with a pencil, and you erase. The eraser gets bad, or whatever the case may be. They can you leave that you have that that smudge left by the lid on the paper. So it's kind of hard sometimes to write over that. Um, so typically rule of thumb is that when you write, especially when you, that's why they require that you write with a pen. You'll just simply draw a line through that. Um, initial that you made that correction and then you write out what should be there um, beside where you made the correction or in the allotted space um, for that electronic records corrected by 
authorized individuals. Or I just said, include all relevant information in a timely manner. Yeah, and make sure. Because things, things are time sensitive when we're dealing with, um, when we're dealing with, um, in, in the medical field. So just to make sure that you, you document everything in a time in a timely manner. All right. So we had procedures and policies. You see, make sure you uh, review table two five in your textbook. And uh, confidentiality and privacy. Clinical information must be kept confidential and private. Healthcare workers must be careful not to disclose patient information in a casual fashion. Discuss that uh, discussion that does not directly relate to healthcare workers' role and change and caring for patients should always be avoided. Okay, All right? Again, you just don't want to be out here just talking all willy nilly with with anyone about anything that a patient has going on. Um, again, just put yourself in their shoes. Think about how how you would feel if that was done to you. All right. All right, and that wraps up the chapter two lecture.